عرضنا الأمانة على السماوات والأرض والجبال فأبين أن يحملنها فأبين أن يحملنها وأشفقن منها وحملها الإنسان إنه كان ظلوما جهولا and mankind took on this responsibility and mankind was constantly in a state of oppression and constantly in a state of ignorance. And Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, he comments on this ayah and he says the essence of every evil in this world are these two things, oppression and ignorance. Oppression and ignorance are the essence of every single form of evil in this world. Every evil, you will not find an evil from the evils of this world except that it comes under one of these two things. It is either a form of oppression or a form of ignorance. And this is why in our prayer, we seek refuge from the oppressive people, i.e. those people who know the truth, but they still go ahead and do the wrong, so they're oppressive, and those people who don't know it and so they are ignorant. And like Ibn Taymiyyah said, all of the evil in the world comes from these two things oppression and ignorance, oppression and ignorance. So if we look at the state of mankind, the state of mankind, if they don't embrace Islam, if they don't turn to Islam, if they don't correct their character by use of the, the means to correct it that are given to us in Islam, then what do they end up? They end up in a state of oppressing by when they know the truth and they don't do it, or a state of ignorance where they don't know the truth in the first place. And the shaitan, he builds upon these two things. And he builds upon them with two uh, key things. He builds upon them with shahawat and he builds upon them with shubuhat. So as for the issue of dhulm, of oppression, the shaitan builds upon this oppression by the means of shahawat, your desires. So the shaitan tries to get you to follow your desires, to follow what your soul craves for. You know, you just, you know, at the end of the day, how many of you, you know, you find sort of you find that your soul craves when you're lazy, you don't do anything, you don't want to go out and go to work, you just want to eat food and you just, you know, you have your desires from uh, relationships, men and women, and you have your desires from, you know, your, the food that you eat and you have desires from wealth and status and power. These kind of desires that can be at odds with Islam, that can be against Islam, the shaitan, he wants you to follow them. And this is the dhulm that the shaitan wants you to do to yourself, the oppression the shaitan wants you to do to yourself. And on the other side, on the side of ignorance, the shaitani has shubuhat. He spreads false ideas and false notions. He spreads misguidance amongst the people. Things that you hear it and you think that it's true, but it's not true. And the shaitan uses these to make you ignorant and to make you turn away from the path of Allah Azza wa So how do we combat these two things? Because all of the traps of the shaitan, they come down to these two things. Either they come down to desires and oppression or they come down to ignorance and misguidance. That's all of the traps of the shaitan come down to these two things. So what do we use to combat each one? As for the issue of desires and self-oppression, we combat this by patience in obedience to Allah and patience in avoiding sin. So we do our best to prohibit our souls from following those things that they crave that are haram. And that's why Allah Azza wa Jalla says, mentions, As for the one who fears what is going, he fears standing before his Lord and he forbids his soul from its desires. He forbids its soul from the haram that it wants. The nature of your soul that Allah created you with is that it wants to incline itself towards evil. <laughs> the soul is constantly inclining, moving itself towards evil. You have to rope it in and pull it back. One of the mashayikh, he once said to me, the soul of a man is like a camel. This is what he said to me. And I said, Sheikh, I have no idea what a camel is like, so you're going to have to explain this to me. So he said, look, it's this simple. The first time you ask a camel to sit for you, it takes all of your strength and you physically have to drag it down to the ground and hold it there. 
Once it sat for you once, it'll sit for you anytime. And your soul is like this. So the first time you have to get your soul away from something that it craves, let's say you're addicted to a kind of a drug, or you're addicted to something haram, or you're in a haram relationship, and it's a kind of an addiction, your soul is finding some kind of peace and some kind of, your soul is finding some kind of happiness from it. The first time you pull yourself away from that, it's gonna be hard. It's gonna be like dragging the camel to the ground. It's very, very physically demanding, it's very hard. But once you've got your soul used to it, your soul will behave just like the camel will behave. A couple of times you have to drag it to the ground and then it'll behave itself. Your soul is the same. The f a few times you have to drag your soul to the ground and force it to obey you. And then after that, it will behave itself. So this is an example of how we combat desires and we combat self-oppression. How do we combat ignorance and misguided notions and false beliefs that are spread amongst the people? We combat these by getting knowledge in Islam. So we can summarize our method against the shaitan, against the traps of the shaitan, that we get knowledge and we act upon it and we call others to it and we are patient as a result to, of what happens to us when we do so. We are patient in doing good deeds and patient in keeping away from evil deeds and patient upon what befalls us from the qadr and the qada of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we do that. So this is our basic methodology against the traps of the shaitan.